Well done for reaching this final stage of this brain-based education module. We hope that your learning here has been a valuable experience for you and that it will be usefully informing your professional practice. As a means for summarizing the main topical points we have covered in this module, let me quote or paraphrase Cosolino's nine things that are informed by neuroscience and which educators might draw on to inform their teaching practice. Firstly, because the brain is a social organ, it follows then that close supportive relationships stimulate positive emotions, neuroplasticity and learning. Next, learning and memory consolidation involve contributions from both the brain's hemispheres. Therefore, it is important to understand how to engage both in the classroom context. Early experiences shape neural structures in ways that have a lifelong impact on three of our most vital areas of learning, attachment, emotional regulation, and self-esteem. Next, because we do many things automatically and without thinking consciously about it, it is then especially important to teach students to question their assumptions and the possible influences of past experiences and unconscious biases on their feelings and beliefs. Wherever possible, it is useful also to teach students about the interconnections among the brain, the body, and how we learn, because this will help them to understand the importance of nutrition, exercise, and sleep, and which in turn could improve their academic performance and physical health. Because the brain has a short attention span, teachers will do well to make sure they repeat important points in their lessons to deepen learning. We should also remember that the evidence is clear about the effects of fear and chronic stress on learning. The inclusion of stress management techniques into the curriculum is an obvious application of neuroscience to education that can improve learning, emotional well-being and physical health. Remember also that emotion determines whether the learner perceives the learning experience as positive or negative. This is because the human brain has evolved to pay attention to the behavior and emotions of other people. Lastly, note that when concepts and problems are introduced at higher levels of abstraction, returning to them repeatedly and by chunking material into meaningful parts, this will help to improve memory and learning. Thank you for participating in this training and best wishes in your use and application of brain-based education principles and your practice. Bye for now.